leadership is a combination of strategy and character. A very good noon to our guest for the day, our Dean Dr. Poonam Nikam, all faculty members and students of IIBM. I welcome you all to this session of the pre-induction program of batch 23-25. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome our guest, Brigadier Dr. Rajiv Divekar. Sir, may I have your permission to proceed? Thank you, sir. Sir is the director of the SIMS. He was head of faculty strategic and operational studies at Army War College, faculty member in defense strategic studies at Defense Services Staff College, Wellington. He has done his PhD from Symbiosis International University. He is an MPhil from DAVV University and MSc from Madras University. A gold medalist in BE, he has done his MBA specializing in human resource management. He has rich experience of, of strategy, planning, logistics and human resource management based on his service with multinational team as United Nations forces in Somalia and Lebanon. He has served in Kargil and Leh on the line of control where he was responsible for the logistics and supply chain management of soldiers located on post at 17,000 to 22,000 feet in the Siachen Glacier. He is a paratrooper having done jumps from varied military aircraft. He has done skydiving, parasailing, water skiing, hot air ballooning and rappling. He won the National Silver Award in 1981 in Cox Force rowing event. He is an expert in construction of military bridges, demolitions, mine warfare and bunkers and fortifications. He has a large number of research publications in national and international journals and also in Scopus listed journals. Sir is on the Academic Council at SIU and is also a member of the BOS Faculty of Management. So without any further ado, I request sir to kindly take over the session and enlighten the students. It comes. Uh, respected Dean of IIEBM faculty and uh, dear students, a very good afternoon to all of you. I'm sorry for being a little late. Uh, you all have been waiting here for quite some time, so my apologies for the delay. You know, since it's after lunch, I thought it's important to give you some more time so that, you know, you can catch up on a little bit of sleep and be awake for my talk. I call my students transformational student leaders. And I do so with an intent and one of the intents I'll tell you a little later because it'll come up in what I'll be mentioning is because you are the ones who will transform business, you will transform the nation and take it forward. And that will happen only if you are told about it you think about it, it's something that you would have maybe read in the book called Secrets. When you start thinking about a thing and you want it badly, automatically things begin to happen. The world connives to help you to achieve it. So when I call my students transformational student leaders, and why leaders? Because you are leaders. You may be doing a management program, but ultimately you will be leaders. You will be managing things, but you will be leading men. You will be leading people. When I say men, it means women also. So with that as a background, you know, it's an honor and a pleasure to be here addressing you all. It's nice to see such bright young faces, all looking very young and eager, looking at me very expectantly. You know, you are the future of India. You are the ones who are going to transform India, as I said. You will take it forward. You are in exciting times. You would have, if you would have read the papers yesterday, both the Sensex and the Nifty have done exceedingly well. India is the only one which has got a, such a high growth rate. Most of the countries are having problems. They are into recession or they are having problems you know, with the industry. And that effect can be seen with, you know, the big global companies like Goldman Sachs and others. 
including Microsoft and others, having sacking people, something that was unheard of. It hasn't happened in India with the Indian companies. In fact, Indian companies are doing well. So you all are lucky and you all are poised to now join the workforce in India, which is on a growth trajectory. India has already reached the fourth position in the global economy. It's now got a, you know, it's a 3.5 trillion economy. The rate at which we are growing and going, we will soon be 5 trillion and beyond, and maybe the third largest uh, country economically. So you are the future. You are going to be the workforce. You are going to take this country even higher. And looking at you all and the enthusiasm and the energy that I see in you, I have no doubts that India, in a very short time, will surpass the other two, China and US, and be the largest economy, number one economy in the world, and maybe a 30 trillion or more economy. Now, again, I come back to this point that I mentioned earlier. It's such a change from my generation to now the times of your generation. In my generation, Wherever we were, no matter in what activity we were, the, uh, the focus or the thought was survival and how, you know, things should not go wrong. I'll give you an example. The Indian cricket team, we had excellent players even earlier. But the mindset was, match ni harna hai. Somehow we have to make sure that we don't lose a match. So they used to go into a match with that kind of a mindset. That mindset started changing in 1983 when we won the World Cup. And it was when we were the underdogs. And then we realized that we can win. All it needs is something in our mind. We need to be positive. We need to think. And now, we go with a mindset, our cricket team goes with a mindset that we will win. It's not that you may win all matches. We don't win all matches, but then that is game. That's a game. They go with a mindset that we have to win and not that we play not to lose or play to draw. That mindset has now, because of the mindset, now you see how well the Indian cricket team is doing and how each individual player is doing. So this is why I told you that I'll tell you later why I'm, I call my students transformational student leaders is go with that mindset that I am here to transform whatever I do and you will start thinking on those lines. You know Michelangelo, heard of Michelangelo? The guy who painted the Sistine Chapel wall, uh, roof, if you go to Rome, Vatican, you know what he had to say? He says, you know, the biggest disappointment is, with most of us is, that we don't aim for the stars and not achieve it. It is that we aim low and achieve it. To aim low and achieve is nothing great. Anybody can do it. Reach, think about something that is beyond what you can achieve. You may not reach there. You may fall short, but definitely you are not going to fall here for a thing which you can achieve. You may not reach there, you will fall here. It is still much higher and better than where you were, what you wanted. Now this is what needs to be done. And how can this be done? If you transform yourself, you transform yourself mentally. And where does that transformation begin? It's exactly like what Mahatma Gandhi said. And what did he say? Be the change that you want the world to be. We all want, you know, the government to do this, somebody else to do this, the institute should do this. We want everybody else to do it, but we don't want to do it ourselves. 
whose requirement is it it's our requirement if i need something then i need to change myself why should i expect it from you or the government or the institute so with that as the start now let me come to the next part self explanatory yes sir what do we understand from this picture we know what it is it's a caterpillar changing into a butterfly but what is it that we understand anybody who can tell me yeah please so perseverance perseverance is one good point anybody else okay transformation is a long time process very good jain sir my name is karishma raghunshi uh, trust the process uh, we will shine better and brighter okay thank you good good yeah patience okay good correct okay thank you most of the answers have been given so what you need to understand is what shows in this picture is transformation like you all have brought out is not a one day affair it takes time it's over a period transformation is a painful process but what you think painful or what looks to an outsider as painful is not actually painful for the caterpillar or the butterfly the butterfly is enjoying changing just as you see a baby enjoying growing up the baby also is enjoying growing up so the caterpillar inside it's our assumption that the caterpillar is struggling and just as an aside when one man saw that the caterpillar is struggling as the story goes you all are aware of that he went and said i can't bear to see the caterpillar the butterfly struggling let me help the butterfly and so he goes and cuts open that sack and the butterfly falls what comes out a disfigured not fully transformed butterfly comes out which falls to the ground which cannot even fly because it was made to come out before the process that struggle that the butterfly goes through makes the butterfly's wings stronger to grow now he did it before that time the wings were not grown the butterfly was not strong enough the butterfly fell to the ground and died so instead of helping he made sure that the butterfly died so it's a for you it may be painful but for the butterfly it's a very nice process there the butterfly is enjoying it and then it is an intrinsic process it is inside you the butterfly is doing it doesn't need any outside help remember you all are caterpillars who need to be converted into butterflies and if you want to be a butterfly a butterfly which can fly go anywhere colorful everybody loves and appreciates then first it's not something that is going to happen overnight it's going to take time and that time is this two years it is something that is intrinsic to you you have to do it for yourselves i cannot do it they cannot do it for you we can only provide you with the environment for it the less you struggle the less beautiful or strong butterfly you're going to be so remember that and please make sure that you work towards this right to transform yourself you have to transform yourself and it's not easy it's not it's challenging it's frustrating what you may feel but the pleasure comes when you achieve it and when is that pleasure going to come it's like when you're studying for your exams you say yaar exams hai padhna pad raha hai ye aata nahi hai but when the results come you feel so nice so when your placements happen 
or when you go to a good company when you do well in life when you achieve something then you feel nice about it while you are going through it you will never like it but what will happen later like we all do later we say oh those were good old days imagine you are in good days which 20 years later or 10 years later you will say good old days now you will say kahan fas gaye ye pata nahi subah uthna pad raha hai aur padhai karni pad rahi hai okay so these are good old days only it will be later not now right now we come to the let me give you a little bit of perspective to understand you know in india if we take 100 children of your age when you joined school you were one of the 100 who joined school of that only about 64 complete their 10th and let's say 12th okay so 36 or maybe more do not even even though education is free and otherwise they do not complete it of that of the hundred only 27 go for undergraduate or graduation you are one of those 27 who went for graduation and from those 27 only nine come for post graduation so out of hundred only nine you are one of those nine that is not even 10 percent you are a privileged lot you are a privileged lot not because of you but because of your parents you are a privileged lot because your parents have spent money to bring you here your parents have given you that education the other 81 are not privileged it's not that they don't want to do masters it's not that they don't want to get a good job in an MBA why should he be working in the same company where tomorrow you are going to be his boss rather than he being alongside you as a co-worker and working under you because he didn't have the money his parents couldn't afford it it's not that he was any less intelligent he or she was less intelligent than you or didn't have the drive or the passion or the enthusiasm didn't have the money or they had family responsibilities had to work to get money for the family so remember get this perspective very clear if your parents have put you here and you have come and I presume that you all have come here to do the MBA on your own and not something like undergraduate parents tell you any engineering ke ja, ya is ke ja. you have come on your own if you have come on your own and you want to be in business whether you're working for somebody or your own then understand that you are privileged and you need to work towards it Now let me, before this, take two minutes for some other activity. How many of you are engineers? How many of you are from commerce? Oh, that's a big number. Okay, good. How many of you are from arts or other things? Good. That's nice diversity. Okay, good. Nice to see you all. So I presume everybody studied hard in their under graduation? Yes, sir. I can't hear any. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. So now I'm going to ask you some real tough questions. I need who's ready to answer questions. I will call them up here and you have to answer. Who's ready? Come here. Come here. Okay. What's your name? Nidhi Patel. Nidhi Patel. What did you do? Uh, I, I did BCom. BCom. Okay. Coming very. <laughs> what did you do? Sir, Merchant Navy. Merchant Navy. Okay. Come up here. What's your name? Vishal Taylor. Vishal Taylor. Okay. Good. So when I asked you all of you that your graduation well you all said very confidently yes i said who is ready to answer questions so two of them raise their hands are you ready for the questions yes sir what's your name nidhi what's your name vishal 
Vishal. Okay. So you get 100 bucks and you get 100 bucks. Thank you. <coughs> Go, sit down. <laughs> Please, thank you. This is, this is to drive home a point. I asked that I will ask you questions related to what you know, what you have studied. And if you were so confident, but you were not confident to come up here, opportunities will come like this only. And they grab the opportunity, they got money for it. They'll get promotion for it. They will get whatever for it. You were not sure of yourself for something that you did, for something that I told you, I will ask you about what you have studied. If you are not confident about that, then how can you? How can you transform yourself? You are not so sure about yourself. It's okay, she, I may have asked her a question, she may not have answered, may not have been able to answer. But that was not the point. The point was, was she willing to take that responsibility or risk most of us shy away from it and that is why we don't succeed. And then we blame and say, Yaar, wo pata nahi, main itna acha tha. I got 95% in 12th and I'm such a great sportsman and I'm this and I'm that. Wo nahi hota. Because when the time comes, you don't have it in you. Now if I call you, there will be 50 of you ready to <laughs> come up. But that time will not come now. You lost that time. Okay? Right. So, getting on to the next, I, since I don't have much time, we started late. So, let me go to the next slide. Having put things in perspective. Now, the corporate world. What is corporate world? Please understand. The corporate world is challenging. You know, why? before this, let me tell you. Corporate world means business. Why is business there? Business is there to make money. Business is there for growth. If there is no growth, there is no business. If there is no money, there is no business. Business has to, you cannot say that every year we will achieve the same level of, you know, production. You have to keep growing. And you have to grow when there is a competition. That competition is trying to take away your business. In such a thing, you still have to ensure the sales of your products or whatever it is, ensure growth and where the money comes in. If that doesn't happen, then, then like Goldman Sachs sacked its people, if like uh, Google sacked people, you will get sacked. So the corporate world is a very challenging world. It's not a stationary, stagnant world. It is continuously changing and evolving. It is very demanding. There will be things demanded of you where you can't say, I 9 to 5 we kaam karta hun. Or I can only do this much. Then they'll say, thank you very much. Please stay at home and do what you want. It is tough. It is competitive. It's a VUCA world. Understand what VUCA is? Yes, sir. How many know what a VUCA is? <laughs> okay, right. Since I'm short of time, I won't take uh, deliberate into this because there are a few other slides to cover. So VUCA is a world which is volatile, which is uncertain, which is complex, and which is ambiguous. Things are not straightforward. That kind of a world you will be operating in. But then always look at the other side. Look at the opportunities. It's in a VUCA world that maximum opportunities come. There are two ways of looking at a thing. That, you know, it is so difficult, what can I do? And I can give you examples. Or the other way is, oh good, this is there. Now I can do some things. So it gives you a lot of opportunities. So while there may be all this, there will be opportunities for you, but only to those who are willing to take on those opportunities. Now what is the existing environment? You know and we all know technology. 
so many things are happening on the technology front chat gpt is come it's so technology is constantly evolving and changing you have to deal with that like we as faculty have to deal with students using chat gpt how do we make sure that you don't use chat gpt either we we you know trace out and catch you and say that you are using chat gpt or we change our evaluation to something else where chat gpt cannot be used which means that you need to understand technology you need to also know how to operate that technology and you need to also know how to apply technology okay these are essentials which means that you need to be agile you need to be constantly learning and in today's world just knowing one skill is not good enough you need to know multiple skills because these skills are interlinked at the same time please be aware and that is where you really need to be aware there is easy access to knowledge google coursera or many other platforms which are available open source it is available to each and every individual you are here in this institute because you paid money but certain information that is available is available to everybody free of cost so that person who could not join an institute because of money now can access it and learn that person will also be competing with you that person will also be there so don't think that you have that 9% advantage you don't have that advantage as much anymore automation has come in you are also competing with robots and others and of course now there are skills which don't need knowledge when i say don't need knowledge means that if you skills which are where you just need your hands and brains you don't need to understand the principles the uh, processes or its application people who are into repairing your iphone they may not have any knowledge about uh, it or anything but they may be making more money just because of that skill so that workforce is there who are there who can get these skills without knowing the knowledge and of course vuka comes in here and <clears throat> what do i mean by this vuka this vuka is for this in all this you need to have v for vision okay you need to have u for understanding c for clarity and a for agility you need to be have a vision and say okay this thing is coming in so i need to you know plan accordingly use this or do this which will help me you need to have an understanding of how to use things you need to have clarity if you have clarity then only you can do it and agility is you cannot just think whatever i have learned is good enough you need to keep on learning and keep on improving yourself okay now you know one of the things that most of us or at least my students think is i have come to iiebm an institute which is 20 years old has got excellent faculty they've got very good placements their alumni are doing very well placements are very good to mera bhi ho jayega i just don't have to do anything i have to just sit and institute karegi please be aware i told you in that transformation you have to work the institute is not a placement agency i tell my students also this the institute is here primarily to give you mba education to make your foundations strong to help you understand business and then apply or work in that business it is not here for placements we prepare you for placements or the institute prepares you for placements to get placements is in your hands 
and a company if it comes to iiebm it comes because the company knows that this institute prepares students who if we take will perform well and we have a experience of that we have come here before taken students who have performed well and that's why they come but it is not necessary that they will take you or take anybody they will only take if they find somebody who is suitable to work in that company then only they will take so coming to the institute coming for placements is because of the institute picking up students is because of you you have to work for it the dean may be the best dean in india but that does not mean that company will pick you up because they have to work with you so please remember this you need to work for your placements and so you have to be agile and so when we come to education now let's understand this education part and this has been in our apastamba dharma sutra what does it say in sanskrit Ach who can read yeah go ahead loudly acharyat padamadate padam shishya swamedhya padam sabrahmacharibhya padam kalkramencha good thank you so it's given in english now please understand this even that time they understood this that from what you learn from the teacher is only one fourth what you learn from by yourself with your intelligence or on your own is the other one fourth the third one fourth is what you learn from your peers or your friends and the fourth one fourth is with passage of time so these so classroom teaching or from the teacher you learn only one fourth three fourths of it or while in the institute of the three top three one is in classroom the other two are from outside the classroom now what does that mean so as far as the institute is concerned they have got a fantastic curriculum you can't get a better curriculum than this so they are covering the one third are you covering the second one third of the top three i'm talking about and from your friends how do you do so the institute provides you with the facilities to do so what is it that the institute provides you or gives you there are three pillars of transformation or learning curricular co curricular and extra curricular curricular is what the institute is giving you in the classroom the faculty when they are teaching you they are telling you the processes procedures the concepts giving you examples and getting you to do things that is what is curricular in the classroom co curricular co curricular is related to the subject but outside when you go for your summer internship when you go for your projects when you go and do your assignments when you are given case studies to study and come before and not read in the class and prepare for it that is co curricular activity when you organize a guest talk or a panel discussion inviting people deciding on when you writing a research paper when you are participating in b school competitions that is co curricular activity because it is related to what you are studying and that is where you come in it is you who has to do it the institute can only encourage you motivate you guide you facilitate you provide you with the opportunities that's all it can do it is you who have to do it nobody else can do it for you and if you don't do it you have to answer for yourself you can't ask the institute for it and i told you when companies come and pick you up they're going to pick you up for what you have done not what the institute has provided institute is providing that's why they're coming last is extra curricular extra curricular is what extra curricular is which may not necessarily be part of the connected with your teaching why is it important because extra curricular things are in terms of learning leadership skills time management 
team work all that has got nothing to do with your education per se subjects it is something which is outside that and that you do through various competitions that you hold or activities that you do or other things that you do so these are three pillars now just i'll flash this for 2 minutes so you can read these are the 11 attributes that companies look for when they come for placements look for in a candidate now what weightage they give is up to the company but generally they look for these and you will notice that you know the first few are related to the individual in terms of things which are intrinsic to an individual the next few are something that is learned either in classroom or otherwise and the last one is something which i will cover and all these three are covered under what is called ksa who knows what ksa is knowledge skill and attitude good so i'll i'll cover that a little later again so i'm sorry i'm rushing a bit because of time uh, no no sir no but uh, you it's still only 3:45 and i wanted to finish and have them ask questions so okay now you all have an orientation and an induction you are going through it yes, it started a few days ago yes, and it's going on how are you finding it yes, great how many of you are enjoying it how many of you feel it is a pain okay now let me tell you how we have it in sims okay it's not as tough as your induction it is much easier but what we have is we have a 15 day induction and it's part of a two credit course so what we do is the students get up at because they are staying three to a room and you know there are toilets of course attached toilets they have to still get ready so they get up at 5 o'clock in the morning 5:45 they come down 6 to 6:45 we have pt for all of them everybody goes through pt and if you are not well on that day in in terms of you know you have got some pain or ache or something then we make you sit down and you do assignments certain assignments you have to do but you have to come down if you are not well and ill and the doctor says yes then after the orientation we have pt for them for all the pts that you missed so while others are sleeping then you will be doing pt karna to hai okay so 6 to 6:45 is pt 6:45 to 7:30 because we have got five divisions of you know 60 each 300 students so one continues with pt one goes for games one goes for yoga and meditation one goes for zumba and one goes for dance they rotate monday if you are doing pt then tuesday games thursday yoga friday like this so <coughs> rotate so everybody gets to do everything in rotation they do that for the next 45 minutes till 7:30 then 7:30 to 9:30 is taking a bath breakfast and all because they are three to a room bathroom is one so while he is having breakfast i am taking a bath when i am eating breakfast he is taking a bath works in well you come for classes 9:30 to 1:30 you have classes statistics uh, economics uh, whatever you know communication skills this that various things we do 1:30 to 2:30 lunch 2:30 when we say 1:30 to 2:30 lunch means you leave the uh, classroom at 1:45 and you are in the auditorium by 2:15 because it has to start at 2:30 we have somebody coming in either you have a motivational speaker or you have a guest speaker like me or you have somebody talking about specializations or something that just goes on till 5 o'clock then you get a break for tea and then you meet in the evening at 6 o'clock in the auditorium again where you make presentations on assignments that you got the previous day now how do we give these assignments the assignments are every day you are given assignments which you have to write one sheet a4 sheet two sides so about 500 words if there's a diagram then the diagram there you have to hand write not copy but you have to research and write so you are given a topic by the faculty you go research write and submit this is till 11 o'clock at night then it is evaluated by the faculties and those who are you know okay it's okay those who have not done well it's a redo so you'll have to rewrite the whole thing again and those who are good they are invited not all of them selectively to make a presentation the next day 
So you got that assignment one day before, now you make a presentation, three, four of them, so it gives you confidence to talk in front of a group, learn presentation skills and other things, and then the faculty gives you the solution and tells you this is what it should be. Because at the end, later, we are going to evaluate you also on this. There are going to be an evaluation based on what you have done, a question is going to ask. So you need to know what the correct answer is. So we do that. So we start with individual assignment, then for first two, three days, then we go on to a trimate where three of you work together and do that assignment. You have to write one page, but ultimately the trimate gives three sheets. So you need to discuss and decide who will write what. So you write this, you write this, you write this, and then, you know, because that topic is a little large, you need to know which are the correct things to write. Okay, because that again is, like I said, it's going to be evaluated. Then you have a pentamate, then you have a decamate. Decamate is 10 of you get together. So you have to search who's this roll number, who's this roll number, come, let's meet. Then somebody says, nahi yaar, oh, you know, uh, I have to eat, uh, I eat uh, dinner only at 9 o'clock, so I will come only after 9.30. And somebody will say, no, no, let's eat before dinner. Somebody says, we'll eat after dinner. You've got to work as a team and submit. Again, one sheet each, but 10 sheets. Then we increase the tempo by making it individual and pentamate. Trimate and pentamate. Pentamate and uh, decamate. So the pressure increases. Exactly like it happens in corporate life. You are going to be given, you are not going to be sitting on one work only and doing it. You are going to be getting do this work. So we are giving you a feel. And then we also have during this afternoon periods or otherwise we have one day Swachh Bharat. So we have a competition, we give them areas and see how much they can collect. We give them of course gloves and other things. So Swachh Bharat we do. We send them to an old age home or orphanage or a, a mobile crash or somewhere else. Then we also get them to do a business exercise where they have to go, take a lift, go to a designated area, work, find biz, uh, a job, whether it's in a restaurant as a waiter or cutting vegetables and onions, or it is with a stationary shop or in a petrol pump or wherever work for that day and come back. To reach that place, take a lift and go, no paying and they get lift. All of them manage lift, you'll be surprised. And if you can make money, make money. So when you're working for somebody, whether it's in a clothing store or anywhere else, say, ki, you know, uh, we'll work, but you give money, some of them make 500, some of them make 200. So they also do that. Then we have, uh, in addition, we have Sims has talent. So we have a talent show, interdivision competition. Then we have indoor business exercise. We have an outdoor business exercise, like you had a boot camp, okay? Now, why do we do all this? That is essential because you need to know yourself when we are giving you, making you get up in the morning and sleep at 11 o'clock, which you are not used to. When we are giving you assignments, we are having the day, something or the other activity, which you've never done ever before and you don't even get a chance to use your WhatsApp or other things. We are helping you to test your limits and help you understand that I have it in me to do these things because when you go to the corporate world, you are going to be given work and expected to complete it. And if you don't know your limits, you're going to fail. So one, you will know your limits. Two, you will know how to manage time. Because when you're put into a difficult situation, you learn things and you learn how to manage time. You also learn you get that confidence. You learn things that you didn't know you could do. So you get that self-confidence. You learn communication skills, interpersonal skills, teamwork, time management, leadership qualities and management qualities. This is what orientation does. So if they are doing this orientation for you, it is with an intent and a purpose. And that intent and purpose is to transform you. That transformation is required because you want placements. If you wanted only MBA and said, we don't want placements, this orientation would not have been there. Why should it be there? We will give you just the normal basic knowledge and now go. But you want placements. If you want placements, then they are making it available to you. Then you need to work on it and take it positively because it is going to change you. And that change in you is going to remain for the rest of your life. Please remember these two years of MBA 
are going to define the next 40 years of your life unlike anything else when you did your BSc, BCom, whatever it was not going to define but now you come here for a, a, a course or a program from which you are looking for employment either as an entrepreneur or working with somebody. So the next 40 years of your life is going to be defined by this. If it is going to be defined by this then you have to learn from it and they are helping you to learn. You, it is your responsibility now to make sure that you learn. Otherwise you only are responsible for yourself if you don't get placed or you haven't learned. And it, things will not be evident now. Things get, will get evident as placement time comes or even later when you start working. So we, he covered very correctly knowledge, skills and attitude. Now knowledge is what in a way you are being, you are getting in your classroom which is what I called curricular. I told you there KSA curricular. I won't elaborate much. Skills is what you in a way get through co-curricular activities because you are doing things practically. You are developing your skills. And A is attitude. Attitude is solely yours. Totally yours. What we call otherwise extracurricular. What you want to do, how you want to spend your time or how you behave or what your attitude is. Now in all this as far as companies are concerned when it comes to placement or otherwise, they expect you to have knowledge, but they don't expect you to have very great knowledge because you still have, you may not know everything about business because you are at the starting level. Basics you should know. Then will come skills. Do you have the skills for performing the job that you are doing? You may not have very great skills and skills is something that can be learned. You when you were born didn't know how to tie a lace. You didn't know how to brush your teeth. You didn't know how to comb your hair. You didn't know how to wear your sari. It's a skill that you learned. It is learnable. So companies say, yes, we will take this individual. The individual will learn from it. But attitude is something for which they give maximum weightage. And attitude is something that is intrinsic to you. If you are always grumpy, if you are always cribbing, if you are always negative, if you are always finding fault, if you are always unhelpful, then that's your attitude. It's not going to take you anywhere. And companies will make out in the interviews about your attitude because it's a process that has got refined over a period. They know what questions to ask and what from the answers they can make out. Please concentrate on your attitude more than others. It's not that others are not important, but attitude. Change your attitude. Find out from others what your attitude is or think about your attitude. And attitude can be changed if you make a conscious effort. But if I am always right, to baki to bakwas karte hain. Khana to ekdam ganda hota hai yaar. Oh yaar, I mean, don't be negative. Yeah, either to aise hi hota hai. This institute mein to koi sunta hi nahi hai. Malo, every time cribbing or something. If that is going to be your attitude, you are not going to go very far. So please try and change your attitude. Okay. Now let's come to the interesting part. How do I click this? Okay, I'll show you a video. Right? No, click on that only. It would have gone. No, put it on big screen, slide, huh? and click on that. The monkey business illusion. Count how many times the players wearing white pass the ball. Okay. How many times? 
How many say 15? 15. How many say 16? How many say 17? How many saw a gorilla? Okay. <laughs> you all have seen this video before. <laughs> no? Sure? Okay, play the rest of the video. Good. Then you guys are very observant. The correct answer is 16 passes. That's not the, that's not Did the Did you point. spot the gorilla? Yes! Who didn't spot For the gorilla? For people who haven't seen or heard about a video like this before, about half missed the gorilla. If you knew about the gorilla, you probably saw it. But did you notice the curtain changing color or the player on the black team leaving the game? Did you notice that? Yes. Anybody? Got Let's color rewind changing? and watch it again. Here comes the gorilla, and there goes a player, and the curtain is changing from red to gold. When you're looking for a gorilla, you often miss other unexpected events. And that's the monkey business illusion. Thank you. So what happens Learn is... Learn more about this illusion and the original gorilla experiment at the invisible... Okay. Thank you. Right. The aim of showing you this was, of course, to bring in a little change. But the point here is that, you know, we get fixated on certain things that we tend to not look at other things and we miss other things. Other things were equally important. I mean, a gorilla coming in and he's doing this also and yet you miss. I can understand the color of the curtain changing, but a player going out or this. So this is what happens if you are fixated on a particular thing or you are concentrating only on one thing, which means that don't just concentrate on one thing. There are multiple things to do and be aware. Situational awareness is very important. Okay. So that is first point. Now the second is creating your own opportunities. So now let's see this video. This 24 year old MBA student has been working as a traffic volunteer for the last one year persuading people to follow traffic rule with a smile on her face and dance move that no one can resist. working with an NGO as a part of my curriculum where I saw this opportunity offered by Indoor Traffic Police to be a traffic volunteer and at first it sounded me so fascinating that I couldn't resist myself to join it. Someone to shout at them or penalize them for not wearing a helmet or a seatbelt. You get angry, you get frustrated especially when you are returning back home after a long stressful day. But at the same time, traffic rules needs to be known, needs to be followed for their own safety. Shubhi slowly improvised her style and tone to approach people over traffic rules. Punished for not following a traffic rule. What I started doing is I started thanking people, I started appreciating them by saluting them and thanking them with a smile for wearing a seatbelt or a helmet. And in this way, I was indirectly able to communicate the violators for not following the rules. Well, I mean even above my expectations. People who were not wearing seatbelts started wearing it looking at the ones who were being appreciated for doing the good thing. Her beautiful smile and her heartwarming gestures made people listen to her and obediently follow the traffic rules. You're so happy when people smile back at you because they expect you to scold them and on the other side you instead smile at them and request them to follow it. You know, it is the best, best feeling in the whole world and I look forward to spread more traffic awareness in the world. Shubhi's commitment to her job is truly an inspiration for young India. If you find the story of Shubhi inspiring, do share it with your family and friends. For more such inspiring stories, keep watching Be Better India. Okay, so now you saw this video. This is of a girl who was, till last year, a student of SIBM. You heard of SIBM? Yes. It's one of the top-ranked uh, top B schools in India. Yet she did not get selected for, by any company for summer internship. 
so she decided to go to an NGO and work. There, then she was told to be a tra traffic warden, which you've just seen. Now there are many things to learn from this. Okay, just because you are in a good B school doesn't guarantee you that you will get whatever you want. Okay, but she didn't lose heart. She said, "Okay, I don't get this. I'll go over there." She went there. She was told to do a traffic warden's job. I'm sure. None of you would want to do it. I'm not saying that it's that you guys, but mostly nobody would want to do it. She didn't say no. She says, okay. And then she worked how to do it well and enjoy it. And because of that, she became famous. People knew about her. They talked to others. They took her videos. Those, those videos got picked up by news channels. And she got called by channels. There was this uh, thing on Women's Day where she was called by a TV channel. It came in the news. It came everywhere else. What did she do? She just did her job. But just doing that job, doing it well, doing it in a manner in which she enjoyed and made a difference, made all the difference otherwise. What do we do? Ya Mirko the institute ne placement hi nahi dilaya. Ya Mirko yitske saath dilaya. I mean, what the hell? You know? How, why should I do it? Then you go to a company where you got an internship. They tell you do photocopying, do stapling. I say, I have come here for internship. I have come here not for stapling or for photocopying. We are always cribbing. We want somebody to do things for us. And we want expect great things. Why can't you think? And why can't you say what will I do? How can I make things better and make an impact? Do you have that ingenuity in you? If you have it, if you have that out of box thinking, if you have that drive in you, if you have that attitude in you, nobody can stop you. You will do well in life. And I told you 40 years, it's not a question of six months and you know marks for your SIP. Why do, what differentiates those who are on top from the rest? It is these things that differentiates them. And what is it? Did it involve knowledge? It didn't involve knowledge. Did it involve skills? It didn't involve skills. All it involved was attitude. I told you, attitude is the most important thing. Skills, knowledge, yes, but not necessary in every aspect. Attitude makes the difference. This is what it is. Okay? Now, so sorry. <laughs> Going beyond time, so I'll take the last thing, self-understanding. Now, you know, there was this survey, which was a paper that was written and a survey done, uh, and which got published in Harvard Business. It's given there, Harvard Business Review, by Brush and Goshal. Now, this is applicable to most of us, you know. Now, let me relate it to you all or my students. You know, when the institute starts, and when we are doing, you know, selection for clubs and cells, then we have a lot of them, you know, who want to join and they come in this category of distraction. They apply for all clubs and cells and they want all activities. Oh, ye bhi karna hai, wo bhi karna hai. They are high on energy. Energy is a lot, but focus is not there. Somebody says, yeah, let's go for marketing club. Yeah, let's go for marketing club. Nee, nee, yaar, let's go for you know, this, whatever. There's no focus. They are low on focus, but high in energy. They don't achieve anything. Because obviously, you're not sure. Kya karna hai? Mughlai khana hai? Nain, nain, yaar. Mughlai khaten. Somebody says, nain, nain, we'll go and eat Chinese. Haan, chal, chal, Chinese khaten. So, you know, energy is a lot, but focus is not there. You're not going to achieve. 40% of us are like that. Then we come to the next 30 percent who have low in energy but high in focus. So, yeah, you know, muscles, I have to make my muscles. I am going to, you know, focus, exercise karna hai. So, I go and join a gym. And then morning when it comes, go to sleep. Energy nahi hai. Second day also, nahi, kal se karunga. Nahi, nahi, yaar, you know, after four days, aaj thoda rain ho raha hai. So, 
फोकस इज देयर करना है असाइनमेंट्स करने हैं बट एनर्जी नहीं यानी आज निकल करेंगे कल नहीं यार परसों करेंगे सो थर्टी परसेंट आर इन दिस कैटेगरी आइडेंटिफाई योर सेल्फ वेर यू आर ट्वेंटी परसेंट आर दोज हु आर डिसंगेज दे आर सॉरी प्रोक्रेस्टिनेशन वॉज लो नॉट हाई इन फोकस लो इन फोकस आई एम सॉरी दिस वॉट आई टोल्ड यू गेव एन एग्जाम्पल वॉज ऑफ ज्वाइनिंग अ जिम एंड ऑल वॉज दोज हु आर हाई इन एनर्जी इन फोकस एंड लो इन एनर्जी दैट इज डिसंगेज थर्टी परसेंट ऑफ प्रोक्रेस्टिनेशन हु आर दोज चलता है यार क्या करेंगे फेल ही तो करेंगे या मार्क्स तो मिल जाएंगे तुम कर देना मेरा नाम डाल देना यू नो इंस्टीट्यूट आई माई जॉब वॉज ओनली टू ज्वाइन द इंस्टीट्यूट अभी प्लेसमेंट तो ये करेंगे ना इतना पैसे क्यों ले रहे हैं हमसे प्लेसमेंट नहीं कराएंगे फिर किस लिए पैसे दे रहा हूँ मैं सो दे आर दोज काइंड ऑफ गाइज हु प्रोक्रेस्टिनेट कि बाकी सब तुम्हारे लिए करेंगे तुमने कुछ नहीं करना है मैंने तो मैंने तो फीस दिया है भाई इट्स ओनली द टेन परसेंट हु आर पर्पजफुल हु आर हाई इन एनर्जी हु आर हाई इन फोकस ओनली टेन परसेंट एंड दीज आर द टेन परसेंट हु देन डू वेल नॉट ओनली इन द इंस्टीट्यूट नॉट ओनली इन प्लेसमेंट्स बट वेर एवर दे गो ओके now what's your worth please identify your worth you must be knowing this example and so let me tell you this example again for those who don't know okay what is this 500 rupee note it's a new note its value is 500 now i crumple it and i throw it somebody picks it up and opens it it's all crumpled what is its value 500 if i put it down stamp on it put some mud on it what will be its value 500 if i tear it and go to a bank and go to exchange how much will they give me 500 what does it mean that the note no matter what it happens to the note the value remains 500 know your worth Uh, you know improve increase your worth and don't get worried when it comes to placements when companies that you want to join don't select you it is not that you are not worthy it's not that your worth has come down it is just that you are not fit for the company what they are looking for but your worth remains what your worth is don't get disheartened if that company didn't want you they didn't want you not because you were not worthy it is because the role required something that you didn't have or maybe somebody else suited better remember this your worth remains what it is and know your worth and keep that in mind never get worried ki mera placement nahi hua or i didn't get this company wo to you know uske to number bhi kam hai usko to ye bhi nahi aata usko usko select kar liya why should you worry about that you worry about think about yourself be confident about yourself know what your worth is now some action points for the two year mba okay see whatever activity you do in life you always think about it isn't it tomorrow you want to plan a holiday you make some plans you say us time pe ye do din chutti hai then i will go there then we will do this we will see that so you know here for your career have a road map and when we say have a road map means what you want to be in life okay i want to be whatever something in this particular sector or i want to be in this company now in that company if i have to be if that is your long term goal then have a short term goal and have an immediate goal the immediate goal is something that is achievable within the next 6 to 1 year or 2 years which is what you need to have in here but what to achieve will depend on what you see yourself 5 years from now or 15 years from now okay ultimately you may reach there or not that is different because things may happen and you may go somewhere else but at least you have to work backwards and then plan what you need to do in this institute then only you will be able to work otherwise if you are not focused if you don't know what you want to achieve then you will not be doing then you will be like that guys who will be you know high on energy but low on focus 
so don't be like that research research is very important in business no matter whether you're in finance hr marketing operations you will have to do research now one of the things i find students not taking interest in is research methodology or other things i don't want to go into the details but it is very important for you to learn research because it will come to you whether you do competitive analysis or you do customer satisfaction or you do anything else whatever you do you have to do research you do research in your day to day life for anything that you want you want to buy some dress you are doing some you know searching kidhar kitna sasta hai ut kidhar sale hai kidhar kya hai you know kahan se wo what type it is so you are doing research this is just a little more scientific way of doing it upgrade your skills because you are getting competition from those who may not be mbas who may take away your jobs automation may take up take away your jobs unless you upgrade yourself so don't think that you know just getting an mba is good enough and prepare for interviews and what do the things that they ask for in interviews generally you see these are the five broad things 1 2 3 4 5 5 so your technical knowledge your management concepts applicability of management concepts recent developments and functioning but these are not necessarily the important ones or on which it is based the thing is these additional ones are the ones which relate to your attitude and these are most important so when you are doing your summer internship please do it seriously because they're going to ask you and from that make out what your attitude is of other projects and of course work experience the work you okay finally make a difference sims motto is make a difference but i think it's relevant to you make a difference make a difference to the nation you belong for the society you serve in the company that you're going to be working in of the family you love in and towards to live in and towards self in terms of personal growth attitude and behavior and be a responsible citizen effective manager and a dynamic leader and i'm sure all of you will do well make sure you do so and take india to be number 1 in global economy and a 30 trillion economy so that you know india becomes the best and you all be the future ceos okay so thank you very much all the best to you thank you so much sir for your time and sharing your experience and views i'm sure the student understood that to be a success in the corporate world or to be in your personal life you must go through a painful process called transformation and at the end as we all say that uh, shoot for the moon even if you miss you land the, you will land among the stars Thank you sir we are looking forward to have you again thank you